So yes, yeah, so you you work for the the ferret. Um, so I mean, what what exactly you know is is the ferret, and what is it that you do there? Uh, okay, the the, the ferret's uh, an, an investigative website which we um, a group of us set up in two thousand and fifteen, and we got together and decided to um, um, establish the project just in a response to kind of less investigative journalism being carried out by the mainstream media. Um, so we, we crowdfunded and the, the project has, has grown since then. So it's, yeah, it's investigative journalism, public interest uh, journalism. So I'm a, I'm a co-founder and I co-edit um, the ferret. And it's a, it's, a, it's a good project. And our investigations include work on the far right. So what, um, uh, what countries have you done investigations in? I've been to, uh, I went to Russia in 2004. We went to, to Moscow. Um, and did work on neo-Nazi groups there. I went to Austria in 2009. Um, we, uh, we went out to Austria on the back of a, a national election that saw far-right parties jointly get about a third of the vote. And we investigated the, the Freedom Party. Um, I've also, I've done a lot of work on the far-right in the UK. And I also went to, to Greece to report on the, the trial of Golden Dawn. It must be uh, must be fascinating in light of everything going on in Ukraine, uh, having been to Russia. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, Moscow was fantastic. And, you know, it, 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 was a, it was a really good trip, you know, and at that time, um, the, the trip came on the back of a report by Amnesty International about rising attacks um, on immigrants by far-right groups. Um, you know, and I think looking back now, maybe that was in 2004, so nearly 20 years ago, but yeah, I never envisaged back then that, you know, there'd be similar problems in the UK. <laughs> yeah. so, um, you know, so it, it seemed like, you know, a different world, um, you know, but we've done work on the far right in, in the UK, and unfortunately, we, we there are problems with, you know, neo-Nazi groups and far right groups in, in Britain now, which is, you know, quite disturbing, I think. Yeah, it's really upsetting. So how, how was it that you came to be involved in the, the Golden Dawn and the Pavlos Vissus case? Yeah, I mean, um, basically that's, you know, directly as a, um, it was a result of my interest in the far right generally. Um, I worked with a photographer uh, called Angela Catlin for about 20 years and we've done a lot of international trips to report on um, human rights issues um, on, on the far right. We were, we were um, looking at another trip and I was aware of the, the trial of Golden Dawn and the political situation in Greece. Um, you know, so we, we decided to go out to Athens and we spent a week in Athens. Um, and that was in 2019. So the, the trial had started in April, 2015. Uh, so it'd been ongoing for, um, for four years at that point. Um, so we, you know, we interviewed um, uh, lawyers who were involved, prosecution lawyers involved with the, the case, people who'd been attacked by Golden Dawn and various other interviewees uh, and produced reports for a couple of um, media. I mean, what, and what specifically was, did, did you do on the case? I mean, did you, because you met Christina and the people that work for Forensic Architecture. Yeah, I mean, we were looking at the, um, the the kind of situation as a whole and the, the actual the, the trial of, of Golden Dawn. Uh, so there were six or nine members on on trial, including 18 MPs. Um, and as part of that um, investigation, we interviewed um, forensic architecture uh, who examined the murder of Pavlos Fisas and they testified at the trial. Um, you know, and that murder you know, outraged most Greeks, and there was protests in Athens and other European cities, including Barcelona, Paris, Amsterdam, and London. And Golden Dawn's leaders were arrested um, on 20th of September 2013, 11 days after his his death, and that sparked a major probe into into the party. And um, you know, so the murder of Fisas was one of the the four main charges that made up the the prosecution's case at the trial. Um, so, so I wrote about that 
Um, and yeah, as part of that, we interviewed forensic architecture who were, you know, did a fantastic um, investigation into that specific um, incident. So, so throughout the whole thing, what, what would you say is the most well, f- the fascinating, notable experience or interesting thing that you learned? Yeah, I mean, regarding the murder of the, of the FISAS, I mean, the, the whole trip to, to Greece was a complete eye-opener. I'd, I'd been aware back in, um, you know, 2010, 2011, um, 12, 13, that, you know, vaguely what was happening with Golden Dawn in Greece, and there, there were some reports in the media. You know, but I, I just didn't understand the extent of the problem until we went to Athens and started interviewing people who'd been affected by it, victims of attacks. Um, you know, it was quite extraordinary. It was, it was, it was an eye opener. Um, you know, so, so, so that you know, the, the scale of the problem was 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 just astonishing um, for me. Um, and as part of that, regarding the murder of Fisas, um, you know, it was the, the fact that you know police stood by and did nothing, then they lied about what happened. You know, there'd, there'd been calls made to the police, and armed all armed officers responded. And they later claimed that they arrived too late to, to save him. He was found lying in a pool of blood in the street, you know, and they were supposed to be upholding the law, protecting people, not helping neo-Nazis. Um, yeah, I just thought that was astonishing that, you know, law officers would, would do that, basically. Mm. Oh, that was going to kind of be my, my next question. I mean, how, how deep do you think the involvement with the Golden Dawn goes into the Athens Police Department? Yeah, well, you know, forensic architecture proved that they were um, complicit and lied in, in the murder of um, uh, Fisas. Um, we heard from other interviewees that police often stood by when Golden Dawn was committing violent attacks. We heard that numerous times from interviewees. Um, Nayam El Gandur, he's an Egyptian who has lived in Greece for over 40 years and he's head of the, the Muslim Association of Greece. He testified at the trial and he testified that the police were complicit uh, in Golden Dawn's activities. Um, he talked about an incident which uh, a mob of Golden Dawn members uh, locked 40 Bangladeshis inside a, an Athens mosque in October 2010 and attempted to burn them alive. Um, you know, he also talked about how the party and migrant neighbourhoods would um, have um, guards dressed in black in metro stations. And he said they were checking immigrants' papers, taking money. He, he said, I quote, you know, they spread terror in, in the neighbourhoods, you know. And again, the police often stood by and, and did nothing, um, according to those witnesses. And that was testified at the trial. Wow, that's crazy. Do you, and do you think since the conviction that there has been any meaningful reform in the police department? My understanding is that's not been the case. Um, I, but I mean, I've not been back out to Greece since the verdict, so um, I, I couldn't give you a, a more um, detailed answer than that. But yes, certainly, um, uh, you know, Golden Dawn, uh, after they were committed, they've kind of gone on the ground. Um, but yeah, the, the, I think the situation is still quite volatile in, in, in Greece. Um, and, you know, I, I doubt very much. You know, they, they seem to have a lot of support from police officers, Golden Dawn. So I, I, I would doubt that's dissipated. And what, because I mean, obviously, I think their, their, height, their height, they got 7% of the vote. What do you think allowed them to grow to that size? Um, well, Golden Dawn were, you know, sort of first came on the scene in 1980, you know, initially a fringe group of far-right nationalists, nationalists but I mean, they, they kind of grew that support by exploiting concerns over immigration after the Greek economy started to nosedive in 2009. So they were kind of capitalising on public anger over immigration and austerity cuts. Um, and they were, they, you know, entered Parliament in 2012 with a total of 18 seats. And then three years later, they were the, the third most powerful political force uh, in, in the country. Um, you know, I suppose generally the history tells us that the far right tends to increase its support during economic downturns. 
you know, ultra-nationalists blaming foreigners, minorities for, for problems, you know, the Jews were targeted by the Nazis, for example. Um, go back to the UK, which I, I mentioned, you know, we've seen the rise of the far right in the UK over the past decade. We've had similar economic problems here. Um, austerity, um, for example, you know, we had national action, which was banned by the UK government um, and Scottish Dawn, one of its offshoots, which the ferret investigated, that was banned as well. And that was basically national action re-emerging under a different name. Um, yeah, so need the, in, in broad terms, the far right does tend to, to build support by by blaming others when you know there's recessions, etc. Mm, well, I imagine the 2008 financial crash must have played a huge role in that. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, it sounds fascinating that the UK stuff. I mean, that could probably be a project in and of its own. Mm -hmm. um, have you had any interaction with the Golden Dawn personally? Um, when we were in Athens, we went to its headquarters um, and we were, were told to leave by security officers. Um, when writing my articles, I contacted Golden Dawn uh, repeatedly with questions. Uh, but the only person to respond was um, Georgis Germanis. Uh, the rock star guy. Eh, no, that's Cassidiaris. Um, Germanis or right. Germanis, I'm not sure of the pronunciation. He was the um, the alleged head of Golden Dawn's paramilitary hit squad. Um, right. And he denied all the charges in an, an email, but was found guilty of running a criminal group at the trial in, in 2020. But aside from him, nobody else um, responded. I do, I do believe Germanis was in a rock band. Uh, right, from, okay. From, yeah, right. From yeah. things I've seen. Right, because yeah. I think Castiaris is the well, the, the handsome one that, that the media tends to fawn over. Yeah, the kind of playboy image. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's very strange, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. The way the you know, and, and we were also told that um, by anti-fascist groups that you know a lot of the media um, initially you know, failed in reporting on the extent of the violence of, of Golden Dawn, and there was a kind of um, they were implying that they were almost kind of complicit as well, you know, by by not really um, investigating them uh, and, and reporting on their, their activities. Uh, yeah, so it, the, the, there was a lot of reasons, quite complex, but quite a lot of different reasons why they were able to to get to such prominence um, over such a short period of time. Do you do you speak any Greek? And if if not, was that a, an obstacle? I don't speak Greek. No. Um, we 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 um, we basically worked with um, different human rights groups and uh, organised everything in advance, and they would translate for us where necessary. Right. So, and I mean, with with, with the trial now being closed, do you do you feel that justice was dealt, or do you, do you think it wasn't? Um. Uh, yes, I, I think, you know, Golden Dawn was notoriously anti-immigrant and it was behind hundreds of attacks on, on Muslims, Jews, immigrants, trade unionists, political opponents. opponents. Um, one of our interviewees during the trip was Javi Daslam, uh, president of the Pakistan community of Greece, and he, he testified at the trial. He documented more than 70 attacks on at seven zero attacks on migrant labourers between April two thousand and sixteen and October two thousand and seventeen. Um, he said that from two thousand and ten to two thousand and thirteen it was even worse, with up to eight hundred assaults. Um, we interviewed people who'd been badly assaulted, uh, including Pakistani migrant workers on farms on the outskirts of Athens. Uh, two interviews interviewees said that who did men with armed sticks would arrive in trucks and chase them across fields um, and if they weren't quick enough they were beaten viciously and, and had suffered dreadful injuries so you know my, my personal view would be that Golden Dawn were, were vicious racist bullies basically. Yeah. Um, I mean the, the, the last question I really wanted to ask is do, do you think that there's a possibility of either the Golden Dawn or the far right in general making a resurgence in Greece? Yeah, uh, I do. Um, 
they, 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 they don't, they've not gone away. They, they appear to have reinvented themselves. Um, one of the Golden Dawn leaders jailed in 2020, um, the former party spokesman, Elias Cassidiaris, who, who we just spoke about, he's formed a new nationalist party called Greeks for the, the Fatherland. Um, earlier this month, a Pakistani worker was shot in the head in Greece in a suspected hate crime. Um, and that comes ahead of a, an appeal trial on June the 15th involving dozen, dozens of members of Golden Dawn. Uh, the man was repeat, repeatedly fired at by a taxi driver in central Athens. Um, he survived the shooting. Um, but yeah, there, there are still problems there. You know, in, in broad terms, my experience of reporting on the far right is that, you know, the, the, they tend to go underground, but then they will reappear under a different guise. Um, under different names, and um, so no, they don't go away. They, they go quiet, but they they're in the background. And when circumstances are right, they, they come to the fore again. And we've seen that in in the UK in recent years as well. Mm. Yeah, it's a it's a scary thought, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and we've been um, looking at that uh, in Scotland, for example. Um, when, when national action was banned um, by the UK government, uh, a few months later, a website appeared under the name Scottish Dawn, which was named after Golden Dawn. Um, you know, and we suspected that these were people that were involved with national action. Um, so we, we did a seven month investigation and were able to prove that um, and exposed them. And Scottish Dawn was then banned by the UK government in 2017 under um, terror laws as well. Um, there are new groups um, on the go at the moment, recruiting, um, so we are, we're investigating them. And we know from our um, investigations in the past that there are people involved with these new groups that um, were involved with previous far right groups, you know, so yeah, it, it's, a, it's a difficult problem to tackle. Yeah, I mean, like I said, that I mean that does sound fascinating. I certainly would be, you know, for my myself, interested in doing a future project on something like that. Um, that sounds very interesting. Um, well, thank you, thank you a lot for uh, taking the time to speak to me today, Billy. I do appreciate it. Not a problem. Glad to help.